Right, so the paint's dry, absolutely bone dry again. Test it with the back of your hand just to make sure. Yep, lovely, okay. So the next thing we do, we've got to lift off all the masking fluid. Now you can either use your finger and just gently lift it off like that, just rubbing against the paper. Sometimes I can use a, a tiny little bit of dried uh, masking fluid and you can just lift it off. It stops you pushing your, your, your fingers and, and, and maybe dislodging some of the paint that you've put down on the, on the paper. So just lift this off, just gently. Try and get rid of your masking fluid as soon as you can. If you leave it on, to, on the board too long, um, I've actually had masking fluid. It's, it's almost settled into the paper and I've not been able to lift it, so don't leave your masking fluid down too long. Right, well that's got rid of all the, uh, all the masking fluid. And what I want to do now is just soften up some of these harsh edges, and I'll do that with a slightly stiffer brush and, and a tissue. And what we'll do is we'll, we'll just work into the, into the edges just gently and just start lifting out some of the, there we are, and just start lifting out some of those harsh edges. We're not trying to obliterate what we've got under, we're just trying to get it to join in in places in with the background wash, otherwise you're just going to end up with a whole lot of light, light white marks which don't, which don't tie into anything. See this little bit here, look, let's just, let's just take that bit out of there. The same up in with the foliage at the top here. And we'll do this, we'll work methodically through the painting now, taking in, leaving some outlines, reducing some others down to a soft edge. So we'll carry on doing that through the painting. Right, all the softening's finished off now, so we can get back in and start putting some some details in to our overall wash. Okay, and stick the old glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, stick a little drop of water over that edge, because once again, I don't want this to be a harsh edge. And then I'll make the I'll make the paint work up into it. Here we go. Let's move it through. There we are. You see, we end up with a nice soft edge, but then we, right along the bottom, we, we need that to be quite uh, quite a determined edge there. Each time I, I work through a uh, work through a passage, I always look at my tonal sketch, which is sat up there in front of me, just to keep my reference so I know where I'm going. It's very easy with something like this, with lots and lots and lots going on, that you can get halfway through a passage and suddenly think, oh goodness, I didn't I didn't want to cover that in. I wanted that to be uh, to be left a different colour. So. Uh, it's always handy to refer back to your your pick as often as possible, just to make sure you are on the on the right lines. Now I'm holding the brush right on the tip, so I want what's happening really is all the paint is going to come out, and I'm it's, I'm going to tickle this onto the onto the paper, and then hopefully you can see where it where it hits some of the wet spray that I put down, it actually diffuses nicely. I need a little bit more blue, that's better. So I just use my Marillion there and a little bit of Ultramarine just to give it a little bit more substance. Alizarin, just to warm it up a bit, bring those changes, keep them going. There we go, now it comes. There we go, now we'll just very, very, very gently. Yes, there we are. Well, and then just watch it move into there. And then we can coax it along, we can give it a helping hand, that's not a problem. It's not a problem at all. We can, here we go, get that up in there. There we go, lovely job. Now we can bring that down. Now this needs to be dark here, but you can see how I'm still retaining these lovely light areas there. Right, so we bring this down. See how it's starting, we're starting to get this feel of it moving around. I just want to soften that little area there, that's better. Right. So I'm going to have to lift this up in a minute and let all this run back because it's starting to pool at the bottom there, which is quite nice, but it's getting a bit too heavy. So to just to take this pool of colour that's that's collecting here and just to lift that back and let it disperse nicely into this into this light bit here. So we'll just put this little bit down around here and then we'll 
And if you build it up this way, you can see if I carry on going up into here, without any uh, thought about what's going on there, I'll end up and then that'll start encroaching over and, and dribbling down the page, which is what I don't want. So we'll just, we'll just hold that back a touch. And that's just seeping back nicely into the... Look at the way we're getting all these different colours, all mingling and merging there, but they've all got their own identity. It's not just a homogenised mess, you know. We're really moving into it. So I'll just let that little bit dry off a bit, and then we'll move on and set another bit down. Really, we're letting it dry just so that this bit, I can, I can manipulate this little bit here. Carry on building up the foliage, spraying here and there, and dropping the paint in. With the trees done, I can now carry on and concentrate onto this little area here of the rocks in the foreground. So I'll just move into here and I'm using a mixture of burnt sienna with a little touch of alizarin crimson and um, cobalt blue just to blow it down a little bit. We're actually saying rock, so remember when you're saying rock we're talking sharp surface, so when you put your paint down Go in with a nice sharp, make a nice definite stroke. And then take those colours around and put them down into the reflections. Don't paint the, the rocks and then paint the, the reflections in a totally different colour. Use, the, use the, the same mixtures that you've got of the, of the red and the brown and the blue and bring them into the rocks. There we go. and then you get a certain continuity with the rocks. We'll just soften this off here. Remembering this is a reflection again, so we'll just soften these edges here. There you go. Right, I'm going to carry on with the rocks down by the bank. Okay. Now I'm going to make a start on the reflections of this bank now down into the water. Ultramarine blue, a little bit of Alizarin crimson, a little bit of burnt sienna, and of course just a touch of vermilion to give it a, a greeny tinge. Just bring them down into the, the reflections here. There you go, and that's just done that nicely. I'm now going to put in a little bit of local colour into the highlighted uh, grasses over the top of the rocks. So using a, a very dilute wash of Aurelian, I'm just going to drop that in very, very gently, just there. Got to keep this light, got to keep this airy. There we go. Just drop that in there. Into there. There we go. Right, that's it. Now we're going to do the whole area here of the reflections in the water. So we're going to do this in one big glorious wet wash, okay? So before we start, we'll drop in some water, again, at the edges. And then we'll also drop down some, some little street marks down into here. There you go, down into the water. It'll stay dry in places and wet in others. Right, now without any more ado, we're going to jump in and get some of these colours down. So the background through there, we're going to put in a little bit of alizarin, a little bit of cobalt blue, and just bring those across the back there. There we go, and mix it in through there. There we go, so we're moving down nicely. We've got to work quickly here, but then just bring those through. We're leaving a little edge just on the top there that'll reflect and the nice light of the, of the highlighted grasses on the bank near the rocks there. So we come down and we're just going to drop a, a nice strong drop of ultramarine that will just tie in with this bit of dark up here. Careful we don't obliterate all the, all the light. So we just leave that now to dry. Right, that's lovely and dry, so we'll get in now and we'll start off with the rigger. So we'll get these branches, these trunks down here, and we'll go in with a nice, strong mixture 
with the ultramarine and the burnt sienna. We'll just tick out the edges there and just lift a little bit out there where it might disappear behind the, uh, the foliage and then down again, pressing the brush down and then lifting it off as we come into the foliage. So yeah, press down and then out and then up. And again, just ticking out the edges, dropping a little bit out here and there so that the whole thing's not in total focus. There we go, that's that little lot. Now we're going to move the board around so I can actually get it, these little top twigs down here. And I want to pull it, pull it away from me. Try to work that way. It doesn't work. You've got to pull it, draw it towards you. And as we get closer to the edge, just lift up the brush gently, gently. It's a very, very delicate little touch on here. And we might just bring out just a couple into here. Right, now we're going to move into this main one here that's dropping down into the water. And then we're going to come back up, up here. There's another, another nice branch that takes off from there, so we'll bring that over there. Just put a few, uh, put a couple of branches just sitting down there on their own. That looks quite nice. There we go. I think that's that's quite nice. We're going to be put down just a nice little bit of, a uh, little bit of twig work, a little bit of rigor work. This, this ties this all in. So we've now got this whole area of foliage. We've now made sense of it. We've now said, hey, there's a whole lot of foliage and it's being held together with all these. Uh, these twigs and branches. So the next bit we're going to go is going to lift some highlights out of the uh, the foreground rocks. Right, okay, we've now, we're have now we getting close to the end now. Let's uh, have a look. Um, I think we need to uh, put a little bit of dark in this central area here, just to give it a little bit of, a bit of punch. And then obviously if we're going to make this stronger, it'd be better to just bring a little bit more just down into these reflections here. So change brushes, um, work up to a slightly larger brush. And I think what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll just mask out all this lovely bit down the bottom here, because if I start throwing paint around and it starts dribbling off down into there, that's uh, not quite what I want. So we'll just go in with a little squirter again. Let's give it up quick. And then in with a colour. So the only thing left to do now is to bring out some highlights in the water. So for that I'm going to use simply an old razor blade. I'm just going to tilt the board a little so I can get at it. And I'm just going to lift out, scrape out some highlights out of the, out of the paper there. And just add a little bit of sparkle. And once again, Please don't overdo this, it's so easy. Once you start seeing these little sparkles coming, you think, oh, lovely, lovely. And the case here, it definitely is less is more. There's our picture. When you go out painting, don't go only looking for that grand design. Get on down to the river and you'll find almost anywhere along the bank a suitable subject to paint, like I did. So get out your paints and have some fun.
now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop is now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.